Uh, number five is an MIT tech review story by Casey Crownhart. Zinc batteries that offer an alternative to lithium just got a big boost. It's about how EOS Energy, a company that provides zinc halide batteries, just got a $400 million loan guarantee from the DOE. John, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, it's been a long road for that company. They've been working on this for more than a decade. And, it, you know, the support from Jiggershaw's loan programs office is certainly a, a monumental step. We know that we need better diversity in our energy storage resources. And I think, you know, lithium ion alternatives could serve a, an important role in different applications than we're using lithium ion today. It's a lot of money, $400 million for a, a bit of a bet. So it seems a little riskier than the, the LPO has has tended to to go with at least so far since the IRA, um, but I, I think it's worth doing, and it's it's great to see that we're we're going to try difficult things, and and we need to be able to to shoulder some of that risk in order to do so. You know, I had a client once describe the battery storage as being in a state of beautiful chaos, meaning it was fascinating to see how capitalism would produce. Um, competing approaches to a problem and let the market sort it out. Now, we, of course, we know that energy is anything but a free market. Government has a hand in it because it's so essential to the economy. But I would point out that the, the loan guarantee program is supposed to fund the stuff that private markets will not loan money to because Absolutely. it too, has too high a risk. You know, and so to me, um, here we go with zinc based batteries. They have lower cost, but less efficiency than traditional lithium batteries. There are issues with unwanted chemical reactions. And yet I think we've got to diversify the pool of technologies that we're trying out for different storage applications. And I th so I think this this loan is as loan guarantee is really a, a welcome development. I'm fascinated by this entire sector. And I'm going to be interested to see how this all plays out. And we have Casey now to join us to talk about her story. And Casey Crownhouch joining us. Hey, Casey, thanks for coming on the show. How are you? Great. Thanks so much for having me. All right. What's the big takeaway our listeners should have on this story? Yeah, so this is the biggest support the only support um, that the Department of Energy's Loan Programs Office has ever given to an alternative battery company. Um, so I think this is really big news for people who are hoping to see more options to store clean energy on the grid. Casey, you mentioned that there are still some challenges ahead, some of them technical that EOS and others think they can address, but the other being access to capital, which clearly they've addressed through this uh, loan commitment. But but what about breaking this trend that we've seen of of alternative battery makers um, going under because they can't get market acceptance and they can't find that customer that sees the value here beyond a lithium ion and and the different applications? Mm -hmm. Did do you get any grasp for what EOS wants to do differently or or plans to to circumvent that? Yeah, I mean, part of it that a lot of people are saying now is that the timing is just a lot better. You know, we have a lot more renewables on the grid. So I think people are really looking for any option to store energy. Um, and also, you know, having material shortages or, or kind of concerns about that, um, questions about where we're going to get all the lithium, where we're going to get all the nickel for lithium ion cells are very much more top of mind. Um, EOS has also said that, you know, they're planning to kind of build their manufacturing as they get the demand. You know, you, uh, you saw a lot of battery companies in Cleantech 1.0 build gigantic factories and then they didn't have anybody to build batteries for. Um, so that's kind of also EOS's answer to, to part of that question. Casey, do you get the sense that the, <clears throat> there was this de facto verdict that emerged, I think, in the last 18 months that lithium had kind of won the storage race? Does this reset that verdict a little bit or a lot? Ooh, I guess to me, I don't know that that verdict ever really cleared, at least for, for part of the clean tech community. Um, I do think people are seeing this as a big, um, a big point in favor of kind of lithium alternatives. But I think it'll really come down to seeing these projects getting deployed. You know, getting capital is a huge um, a huge barrier, but I think it'll really take getting these batteries out and working and storing renewable energy to, to kind of fully reset that verdict. Probably got time for one more, Casey, but what is the EOS plan to scale then as, the, as they're going step by step? How, how quickly do they think that they can get to market and really capitalize on the opportunity? 
Yeah, I mean, it'll take, I think, a couple of years for them to be fully up to scale. But like I said, it's, it's kind of that step by step sort of process. So it'll be really interesting to see how quickly they can fill orders and, and how quickly they can build out those um, automated manufacturing lines that they're trying to build.